Okay, we're live now. Good morning and welcome to Oklo Nature Kindergarten, which is the home of the virtual nature school. I'm delighted to be with you today. I don't have any children here, but I'm being joined by people at Wendy's house and many other children around Scotland who are going to be sharing with you their ideas around our provocation today. So welcome wherever you are in the world, wherever you are in Scotland, do join me and add some chat, add some likes, whatever it is, however you want to respond to YouTube. It would be great to hear your comments and thoughts. As you know, each inquiry that we do at Virtual Nature School starts with a provocation and lasts five days at least. So as many of our provocations have started on a Monday and they've gone on for weeks and weeks. So you can dip in and dip out. It's always good to have you all five days because that means we get to know each other and you can share your amazing work by entering it into your regional Facebook group. Those regional Facebook groups are set up for people in Scotland. If you're international, there's a Facebook group just for you to share where you are in the world and how you're engaging with these provocations. So looking at our comments, we've got people from Irvine and Dundee, from Air, from Creef, right, just down the road. We've got people from Sky and Owen. So really joining us from all over Scotland, which is delightful that we're all connected on this day. Um, so let's get started and have a look at our first film around rocks and crystals, which is going to be this week's inquiry. Hello, I'm Claire Warden and I'm going to be taking you through this inquiry, which is all about rocks and crystals. This first film is all about getting ready. And as we go through these together, we're going to be building up our ideas and doing lots of playing both inside and outside. So let's remind ourselves that we have a memory book or a learning journal. You can either download one or you might just find a nice book that you want to write in. But the point of our memory book is that we have a go at putting our ideas down. Inquiry based learning is all about having a go. So it doesn't have to be right all the time, but it does involve thinking and testing and problem solving. So our memory book or our learning journal does two things. One is it helps us to remember what we were thinking about. And the second thing is that we can take it back with us when we go to a different setting and share with them what we've been doing on our learning journey. So this is our talking tub and normally our talking tub is a big box full of objects and photographs. But because we're doing this through the online version, we're going to be looking at lots of pictures. It might be a good idea for you to put together your own little talking tub because sometimes it's quite interesting having collections of objects to help you think. What we're going to be doing is looking at the idea of rocks and crystals. And what happened was that I was out on a journey and I came upon the place called a museum. And a museum is where people display lots of different things. But in this particular room, it was all about different types of rocks and different types of crystals. And as you can see from the room, they are all in these big display cabinets. And so then I started to wonder and I started to ponder, which is why we use a talking tub and why we go out to find and see things in the world is to help us to think. And I began to wonder to myself, how many different types of rock are just outside my back door, just where I live? So you may know that this thing is called a volcano and all of the rocks and all of the earth have come from this place inside called the magma chamber. It's where all the lava is. And sometimes it erupts through these big things called volcanoes and they're quite dramatic. What happens in the, all of that is that we get something new called a new rock and it's made out of this orangey color you can see called lava. The time that it takes to solidify, to go hard, varies. The different ways that it affects the things around it change the different types of rocks. So what we end up with is something called rock, which is usually made up of these things called minerals. And we can either find that they come out of volcanoes or that they get created at the bottom of the sea. But either way, it's a rock and it's usually it's split up into little things that we call stones or pebbles. And so we have all sorts of different words linked to the idea of rocks. 
But there's also something called a crystal. And a crystal is something that's made whereby there's been a liquid, like water is a liquid. And as it's actually dried out, as it's evaporated, it leaves these very regular shapes called crystals. Now, for us, we can go out and find out about rocks. And the words that we find associated with that are things like archaeologists or geologists. And that means that we look closely at the earth and we need to use tools to excavate, to find out what's beneath the places that we walk. So we use things like trowels and we use things like brushes to help us get in and find the details. So when you go out and you decide that you're going to be somebody who's an archaeologist or a geologist, someone who loves rocks and crystals, we're going to be asking you to have created a little museum. And your museum will be made up of all of the things that you find out over the next five days. You might want to find yourself the paintbrush that you can see here so that when you find your rocks, you can clean them up and get the mud off them. You might decide that you want to be more scientific and we've got older members of our little learning community at the moment and they might decide that they want to do more research on the internet. They might decide that they want to look in more detail and perhaps you have a magnifying glass or a little microscope on your parents phone that you could use. When we look very closely at things, we can actually find ourselves looking into beautiful shapes and beautiful colours that at first we never notice. So when you look at these 20 rocks, we look at them and we think, goodness me, I just thought they were all grey. But when you look closely, you realise that they've got hints of pink, that they've got hints of orange, they've got bits of green and no two rocks are pebbles are ever the same. When we look at all of these, these have come from a place where they've been affected by the water and it's, it's made them smoother, so they're lovely to handle. These all look like they're sort of brown, but when you look closely, they're different shapes, they're different colours and they're slightly different textures. When we polish rocks or when we wet rocks, it brings up the colours. So you might enjoy seeing the difference that happens when you put your dry pebble or your rock that you find into water. Crystals tend to be very intense colours and sometimes we can have a whole rainbow of colours within a crystal. Rocks tend to be slightly duller, but we can make those colours come out by putting them in water or by adding some PVA glue to them to make them shiny. When you look at what a museum is all about, it's about sorting and ordering. It's about finding little boxes and containers to put your specimens in. You might decide that in your little museum you're going to make, you're just going to have a few rocks and there may be the rocks that you love. Maybe you're going to decide to look at rocks that are bigger and smaller. So you might decide that your museum is going to focus on the size of things. It's entirely up to you what you decide to put into your little museum that we're going to make. It doesn't matter what you decide to do as your main focus, as long as we connect it to the idea of collecting rocks and crystals. Now, where are you going to go? Well, you're going to have to be an explorer. You're going to have to get on your outdoor clothing and go outside to find all these little pebbles. And they're going to be hiding. So you're going to have to look very carefully. Here are millions of little tiny pebbles just on the edge of a garden. And even from here, I can see that they are different colours and patterns and shapes. You might live somewhere more like this. Well, the good news is that rocks and pebbles and things like that are all over the surface of the earth. So just dig down a little bit, maybe in your garden or when you're walking down a street and you'll be able to see these little rocks and pebbles. They may be quite small, so your museum might be about small specimens, small things that you can collect together. If you live near the countryside, you might be able to go for a walk in the park. You might be able to go out and find new places that you haven't been before to find some rocks. Things that you might find useful for collecting and cleaning your stones would include the idea of a basket or something to hold your stones in when you find them.
Be careful not to pick up too many stones that are surrounded by grass because you might find that they're somebody's home. They may belong to an insect. So we have to be selective. We have to be careful about which rock we pick up. We might want to get some brushes together. Maybe even an old toothbrush would help to brush off that mud. You might want a bucket and in your bucket you might want to put some water so that you can really clean up your stones. You might want a towel or some piece of cloth that you can wipe them and dry them so that you can get them ready to put into your little box. Things that you might find useful for sorting out your collection of little pebbles and stones that you find. Well, you might want to go to your recycling box. You might find an old egg box, which are particularly useful because there are lots of different compartments. You might want to make yourself a little box. And I know we have older members of this community who like doing origami boxes. So you might want to get some scissors and paper. You might want to use some sellotape to put divisions into a bigger box to subdivide it. If you're outside, you might enjoy just using sticks and making it so it's a grid to divide up all your little pebbles. You might want to use paper and crayons to put the name by your rocks. Don't forget, we can always make up our own names because it would be really exciting to be able to have a go at making up new names for rocks that we find. We're going to be building our museum in a cardboard box. And Maya has created, one of our children has created a little video for you to have a look at to help you understand how she's going to be building her museum. But you might want to get together a box that you can cut up and use for your big museum where you're going to be able to put all the different things. We're going to be exploring stacking and making bridges. We're going to be looking at transient art. So we've got a lot to do, but we're going to use our museum as the place where we share all of our thinking. I look forward to seeing you in our virtual classroom where you're going to be able to meet other families and new friends, where you're going to be able to share your ideas when you go outside to be a geologist. We're out there as scientists to find out all we can about rocks and crystals. See you then. So oh, well done everybody listening through all of those things and as you heard we have a little film that we'll upload later on of Maya's conversation about how she changed her cardboard box. So let's have a little look at the folks in Wendy's house and see if they've got any ideas about what they might want to do today in response to that little video. Should we go over and see you guys are getting on this morning? Very good, Jimmy. Any ideas? Any ideas? Um, well, um, all these little, these little rocks here, because I don't know the name of them, I might um, research it on Google to find what their names are and then fill in the little boxes. Ah, that's a great idea. Fabulous. Well, Riley, Riley, any ideas? No. <laughs> Jack, what about you? Um... This is um, in trash, so when it looks cracked, it's like it's kind of like at our heart. This would always go find that stuff, and it would use the things that would be cracked, and we'd use to find all the pieces of stick, like try to solve the puzzle to get that. Ah, that's amazing! And so, one of the interesting about things about those. Sorry, um, one of the Sorry. amazing things about those that you were just showing us there is that when you open them up, it's amazing to think that when you open a geode, you're probably the first person to have ever seen it. And so geodes, that thing you're holding there is really exciting. Fantastic. For thousands of years. <laughs> um, and the last time when we've looked at rocks, the boys created a uh, story stones. So it's quite interesting because they've done it on um, the Very Hungry Caterpillar and took the the stones through the story. But it's actually quite apt because at the moment we've actually got our own caterpillar that's in um, its chrysalis stage just now in its cocoon. So that's oh, been quite lovely. interesting. We've had that all back out. So, and he's, he's in there somewhere. <laughs> he's in there somewhere. He's in that's there somewhere. <laughs> And so the story stones, um, we'll be doing more work on story stones later on in the week um, as part of our inquiry about making stories. So that's lovely to hear that you're using yeah. them again. That's really good, Wendy. It's fabulous news. 
and so they've started to fade a little bit but we'll 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 yeah. work on them again this week I think absolutely <laughs> and sometimes that? putting um putting a bit of PVA on or putting a bit of varnish over the top can keep it yeah uh, brighter. yeah because when we're outside they just yeah the rain and the elements start to fade away fade away <laughs> fade away fade away yeah. So, so that's like a wonderful moving. rock collection. Yeah, we've got our, our tick list as well. Jack loves a tick list, so we've got all oh, our bits good. and pieces out. Good. Make sure we're, so. we're ready for the full week. <laughs> Excellent. So for those people who don't know about the tick list, that's your useful resources sheet, and that's available through your learning management system. So if you're part of the Scottish um, project, Virtual Nature School Scotland, you just go to that space, and there's a little sheet that I create every week. And it gives you the objectives and what it is that we're going to be focusing on as our big lines of inquiry. And it also gives you a nice little analysis with some things you might want to get together. Because it's an inquiry, we don't know where we want to go with it, but there's always some things that's useful to have around. So I think, Wendy, if you guys are ready, and I'm certainly ready, I think what we should do is go off and have a little bit of a chance to play with some of the things. I don't know if there's anyone in the chat box who's got some ideas straight away. With me. I can see that we've got people from Sterling, which is great, online, and in the Clyde, Aberdeen. Very good. Anyone got any ideas about what you might be doing today? Whilst they're answering, they're answering I can see Ewan has joined Ewan. us as well. So, hello, Ewan. Oh, fabulous. Let's go to Ewan, shall we, and see how Ewan's getting on today. Hi, good morning, my little co host. Hello. Um, hey there you are how are yeah. you good great so you watch the film any anything any knowledge about stones and rocks do you like them how do you feel well, about that whole inquiry this week well a while ago i went to a place called lead hill and they had quite a lot of like collections like Ooh, put them to the camera let's have a look most of it was like, you this is like rainbow quartz and wow, you know what that's it they're just do you want to find out today? Yeah, so we're, going to find more today. we're going to find more today, hopefully, because I'm going up the whole from cast with my dog, because we go really oh. long. Very good, very good. Can you, I don't know if you can see Should the table find. behind me. This was oh, one of the ones that we found, a giant oh. piece of quartz. Um, and then this bit in here running through it just fascinated us because A, it's really heavy, yeah. and B, we found it actually on site here. So one of the inquiries that we have is always to work out how is this here and what was happening. So I'll be interested to hear your adventures up the quarry um, and what can you slowly find there because they've got such a wide variety in Scotland. That's going to be amazing, Ewan. Brilliant. Yeah, so a few other things I got. I got stuff like fossils and that. But have you? Yeah, right. I went to museums and got fossils and that sometimes and I just stared at them for ages. So one of the um, things we're doing in another inquiry is called Bones and Big Teeth. That's another week. And so mm, we do a lot of work on fossils and making fossils. So you'll be an expert in that as well, Ewan. Fantastic. Yeah. All yeah. right. Very, very every good. Task, every task I get, I just study until I'm really good at it. Oh, well, you're, that's brilliant. You're going to be a nature just, specialist then by the end of this course, hey? Eight weeks of, of deep level thinking. You're going to be exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's really good to, to have you on board. And thank you so much for being my little co-host today. Um, okay. That's fantastic. So I look forward to hearing from you later on as to how you get on and sharing some of those photos. That would be brilliant. So we're looking at our little chat box. So you can see that. You and Sarah Edwards, who's going to down to the river. They're going to sort rocks into those that can be thrown into the river. And those are our time. So throwing rocks is actually really good fun. And I love that ability to be able to skim a rock, um, to be able to twist it enough so that it bounces across the water. That's a really good thing to do. Sharon's going rock pooling. We're going to go tomorrow to find some rocks and look at some sea creatures. That's from their five-year-old group of children who are with her at the moment, which is going to be fantastic. So it sounds like we're all pretty much on board and it sounds like we're all ready to go. So I'll say goodbye to you now and well and say can't wait to see all of your eyes and what you get up to in the Facebook group. Don't forget to tag me if you're doing Twitter. So at me Nature School and that means that we can all keep in touch through Twitter if you're not accessing Facebook.
All right, everybody. I'll see you later on. See you later. Thanks again, guys. That's fantastic. That's you, and Bye.